A very happy morning to one and all here. This is Sheetal, and I welcome you all to Chennai Storytelling Festival 2024. This is our 12th edition of the festival, and I'm very proudly associated with it since the first day. Um, everything has two sides, isn't it? Like um, the pros and the cons. So with CSF, I would say during lockdown, we were benefited because when lockdown happened, CSF went throughout the globe. Today, we have storytellers around the world who are participating in this festival, and we are very proud and very honored to have each and every one of them. Thank you all. So today, we start with our first teller, Priyanka. Uh, I always wondered, you know, I wanted to say something before I introduce the storyteller. So today I have decided to give the meanings of each one of them. So here you go, Priyanka. Priyanka's name is derived from the Sanskrit word Priyankara, meaning something or someone that is sweet, lovable, or her presence makes the place more happy and the one who has lovely eyes, Priyank. Thank you, Priyanka, for being here and over to you. Greetings for the day. Thank you so much, Sheetal. Uh, it was lovely hearing the meaning of my name after a long time. Hello, everyone. I'm Priyanka. I reside in Noida, Delhi NCR region. I connected with uh, Dr. Eric, this wonderful platform and Chennai Storytelling Festival during COVID. So it's a serendipity for me when the boundaries reduced and we all connected world over online. That makes it the fifth time I'm here, lucky to be here. Priyanka, as Sheetal just mentioned, means the dear one, someone lovable, someone who makes the place more loving. As she mentioned, Priyanka would be lovely eyes. I remember reading a Sanskrit meaning, a different version, where Priyank, ank means the lap. So see how same word and the same love can have different definitions. And that sets me thinking. What is love? Where do we find love? Can love be defined by any one relation? If we lose one relation, can we possibly find love in another form, another version? Let's sit back and enjoy the story that I bring today. This story may mean different shades of love to you. See what the story is telling you. Is it about letting go? Is it about pause? Or is it different shades of love? Kabhi <laughs> khab Radha listened to this song in the cab as she was moving on her way. And this song took her back to some years. Normally, Radha didn't go to any parties. She was not a party person. But that day, her best friend Priya had called her over for a party. How could she refuse Priya, her only friend? And as Radha entered, years back, as she entered the party, there was music and a young, handsome boy was actually playing live the song. And as destiny had, just in a couple of hours, they were together in the balcony. Talking, chatting, laughing over sweet nothings. She remembered that Abhay, that tall, dark, handsome guy, had dropped her that day to her house. And next morning, Radha, our protagonist, got the phone call from Priya. Hey, Radha, you and Abhay, you were chilling so well. Oh my God, look at this. All my friends are telling that you both would make a lovely couple. Priya, hang on, hang on. I'm 30, man. I can't decide who can be my life partner. Stop being a matchmaker. 
<laughs> but another six months, lot of meetings. And guess what? Abhay and Radha were a couple. It was a very warm and a cozy marriage. It was a low-key affair. Radha had her mother and of course the common friend Priya. They were happy together. There were moments when both of them would just have a nice sweet conversation. One day, while Radha sipped her tea, Abhay, you're doing the dishes. You just finished the cooking, man. Gosh, I can't believe how lucky I am. How do you manage all that? I mean, you know, here, mostly the Indian couples, it's it's a tabby. It's a taboo that the man does the homework, the household domestic chores. How? Oh, well, Radha, my mom was a very senior doctor. And she trained me and my brother to do everything on our own. So lucky you are. They both had a nice, cozy relation. And one day, while they watched together the TV with some popcorns, casually Radha said, uh, Abhay, uh, what do you think about kids? Do you like children? To her surprise, Abhay said, uh, good, you, you brought this up. I think I, I want to focus on my life and uh, I don't think I'm okay for a family. Yes, let's be very clear, Radha. Let's not go for children, okay? Oh, great. Man, I'm so relieved. Relieved? Why? Asked Abhay. You know, because sometime back, a doctor told me that you have some kind of an ovarian cyst or something and that I can't bear children. So... So, so so it's a deal, right? We do not go for kids. Yes? Yes. And they hugged each other. Radha used to illustrate children's books. She was busy with her work. And Abhay used to travel. He had a lot of travel for his architectural job. They were both busy and happy. One day, while Abhay was away to the travel, Radha had a sharp pain in her body. She decided to meet her doctor the next day. Next day, when she was with her gynae, the gynae was surprised. Well, Radha, this is surprising. Congratulations. You're pregnant. Radha did not know whether she should be happy. She was puzzled. She remembered the moment where her husband had clearly said that they don't want children. In a very confused state of affairs, she left the clinic. On her way, she spoke with her mother, but she could not find any answer. She was still very, very confused. She called up Priya. Listen, Radha, it was your decision. Both of you together decided for it. How could you do this? You know specifically your husband told you not to go for this. The woman and her badly wanted to go for the baby. But the wife knew that the husband has already said a clear cut no. That evening seemed to be the longest ever. She waited, she waited for Abhay to return from the tour. And finally at midnight when he opened the door, she literally jumped. Abhay, Abhay, I want to tell you something. Abhay looked very, very serious. This is not how his body language normally is. Even I'm wanting to talk about something to you, Radha. Wait, listen, I have to go first. I'm pregnant. What do you mean? Didn't we take a decision? You can't, you can't do this. Aren't we already clear about this? We are not going for this. Abhay said that loud and clear and he banged the door when he entered his bedroom. Absolutely shattering this was. Radha had never seen this side of Abhay. She badly wanted it. There was a lot of stress and they hardly spoke for the next few days. And in the middle of all the confusion, there was pain and she realized she had lost the baby. 
They were both living under the same roof. But, there's always a but. They, nothing was same. They hardly spoke. They hardly had any togetherness with them. And then one day, around 8 p.m. in the evening, while Radha was still illustrating and doing her work, suddenly Abhay came and said, Radha, I'm leaving. A oh, good, you are leaving. Your dinner is there in the kitchen. And I said, I'm leaving you. Shut the door while you go, Abhay. I said, I'm leaving you, Radha. Okay. Okay, Abhay. It's good that you're leaving me. Anyway, this is no life together. Anyway, whatever. It was only when Abhay had left that she realized what had happened. Abhay had gone from her life. Days became nights and nights became day. And then Radha could not any more stay in the apartment because every corner, every curtain, everything smelled and reminded her of Abhay and those moments together. She decided to leave the apartment and move towards her mom's house to live with her mom. That day, when she had taken everything and finally decided to go to her mom's place, there was a lot of traffic and a lot of crowd and she realized that the dog had come under a car. And next to that female dog was a little pup abandoned by the mother's death. She picked up that little puppy. Mama, can we have this puppy with us? Yes, from today. And that's how Maya entered her life. It was Ma, Radha and Maya, the little dog. After many months and she being absorbed in her work, she filled up a form for adopting a baby. And in some days, she jumped in joy. Mom, look at this. How many we have to wait for nine months to adopt? And here I have an approval. I can have a baby girl of my own, Ma. That is where Myra entered Radha's life. Myra, Maya, Radha and Ma. Together, Myra and Radha started planting beautiful flowers. They enjoyed the gardening. There was love found in the plants and the greenery. Those flowers were blossoming love. Soon, Myra, from an infant, became a toddler. And then one day when she had fed the baby and put her to sleep, she was on the laptop doing her work. She adjusted her specs and she realized it was a message from Abhay. She read that twice. Wiped her tears. Yes. I'll go. I'll go, she said. Next day, she wore the orange Kanjivaram sari. I think her mom gave on her wedding. And she sat in the cab. She was off to Abhay's place. And that is our story's present moment. Kabhi mm khab -hmm. me Madam, your stop has come. The trip is over. You don't want to get down, said the driver. Of course, she adjusted the palu of the orange kanjivaram. She slipped the fingers through her hair and got down from the cab. She could hear a lot of people from Abhay's place. There was music coming. She opened the door. And even from the back side, of course, she knew it is Abhay. Hi, Abhay. Hi, Radha. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for coming. Hmm. Congratulations, Abhay. Congratulations, Kabir. I'm so glad that both of you have decided to live together. Thank you so much, Kabir. Meet.
Radha, here, a little something for both of you, for the new life. Oh, thank you so much, but this wasn't needed. You are here on this day, Radha. Uh, listen, Abhay, I'll have to leave. Um, I, just, I just came because I wanted to. Can I please? So soon, Radha? Wait now, please. No, I, I really have to go, Abhay. Okay, let me at least take you to the door. And while they both walked together, Abhay said, Radha, is there someone in your life? <laughs> Radha smiled. She said, yes, there is. She sat in the cab. And on her way back, she thought, me and Abhay, Abhay and Kabir, me and Myra, Myra and me, Ma, Priya, Flowers, all of them are love. All of them are real. Aren't these all different shades of love? Thank you. Amazing story, Priyanka. And it was really, really, really heart touching. Super story. So, um, Kabhi khwab me ya khayal me Kabhi zindh gani ki dar me So this song is sung by Yes, please, please carry on. Main adura sa ek gheet hu So this song is sung by Talat Aziz in the movie Daddy, one of my favorites indeed. So it was super hearing this song after so long. <laughs> Thank you. If you Thank could you. permit me for two more minutes, sure. I would have a quick exercise, especially with those who have their camera on. Others, I would request if you could just put on two minutes. It's lovely talking to real faces and black boxes, please. Yes, absolutely. Wonderful. Oh, lovely. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, here. Can, can we have our hands here? Okay. Let's tighten our fists. Come on, let's do this. Okay, tighter. Even tighter. More tighter. It feels good. It feels power. It feels strength. But let's tighten it a little more. How does it feel now, Poonam? How does it feel now after five seconds and more tight grip? I can't hear you. How does it feel, Sheetal? Yes, Poonam? It's, it's painful. Not, it's painful. I'm not enjoying it. You're not enjoying it. Wonderful. Anybody else? Tighten your grip. Okay. Now let's loosen it up. Does this feel better, Poonam? It does. It surely does. Okay. Let's do another quick 30-second exercise. Let's breathe in. Another breath inside. Again, breathe in. More. A little more. Ooh. Can you take it more? Any more? Yes, Jayanti? Nancy, how does this feel? If you're just breathing in, up, up, up. How does it feel? I'm, hold I'm holding my breath. Yes, you're holding it. It's uncomfortable. And you want to? Let go. Sometimes what you define as love also needs a pause, also needs letting go, also needs to be redefined. Thank you. Super. So Priyanka, on this exercise, I would say that in Indian society, we always wait for a comeback. I mean, we are not taught, you know, to move on or let go. And I think most of the Indian women uh, go through this phase sometimes in their lives. Isn't it? Yes, so we move on to the question and insights on the story, please. You can unmute yourself. Well, uh, first and foremost, I congratulate Priyanka for putting up such a lovely story. I'm sure it's written by you, is what I guessed. 
No, not at all. It's not written by me. Okay. I was waiting for a moment where I could give the credit. This story okay. is like a gift which I received from a senior storyteller, Renu Narayan. The story is written by her and I heard from her. Somehow the story stayed with me. And what is interesting, Poonam, is that each time I tell this story, it does something new to me. So here am I sharing it because it probably gives us to some questions which we are not even aware that they are within us. Oh, now I remember I've heard uh, Renu Narayan telling this story. So I was thinking, why is it familiar? I remember it was one of her uh, sessions which she took, you know, storytelling uh, thing. I remember. Okay, so the second part is you really uh, created the entire environment here with your song, your expressions, your actions, everything. And a very thought-provoking story, like uh, Sheetal said, we all go through this in our lives. It could be any form of love, but we hold on. It could be a small plant that we love. We just don't want to share even a sapling out of it to someone sometimes. So the more we are open to receiving love, the more we will be able to let go also. The more you get, the more you give. So we need to make space all the time for taking in more love from different various forms of love. Thank you so much. I take back this lesson. Much needed. Thank I have you. a very little 30 second uh, question. May I? May I? Please. Why do you think there are brakes in a car? Anybody? Why do you think there are brakes in a car? You just not to overspeed. Down. Yeah. Pardon? Not to overspeed. Not to overspeed. Okay. Anybody? To prevent, to prevent an accident. To prevent an accident. Okay. Uh, not I to remain on the same uh, speed. Not to remain in the same speed. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, I would say life is not a race. Um, you can always take breaks in between. Okay. Just Wonderful. Like Anybody else? Pratikya? Sudha, ma'am? You are muted, ma'am. Sudha, you are muted. Sometimes when you're heading towards a signal, you have to slow down to shift into a lower gear. Mm, slow down. So although we feel that brakes are there to avoid accidents, actually brakes are there so that we can drive smoothly. Brakes are there so that we can have a fine drive. I don't need to explain that. <laughs> yes, Sudha, ma'am. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Priyanka, that was very well told. I have a question. Um, when uh, when she opened the door, she was bursting to tell him something, and he wanted to say something too. What was he going to say? That was was he going to tell her that he's planning to leave her? He was. He wanted to share that he's realized that mm. he has different preferences. Yeah, that's okay. But he could have done that nicely. Yes. And why did she go back to 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 meet him? Because she had mellowed down over the years and she realized that love need not really fit into your definition. We all have our different shades of loves. But that's okay. I mean, after he, he, he just dropped a, a bombshell and said, I'm leaving. I'm, I mean, that's not how you leave, right? Absolutely. I mean... It happens all the time. But I'm saying, even if you have to leave, you can do it gracefully, civilly. Yes. I, I don't think men ever <laughs> learn. I'm sorry. That's okay. Yes, Nancy, please. Um, I'm um, in the meeting, you know, uh, to go see uh, Abdi. She was, you mentioned she was wearing this uh, dress. Kanji wearing sari. Yes. Yeah, her mother had given her for her wedding. Was there a particular significance that she chose that dress, that clothes? Uh, that's a beautiful question. What I feel is, um, you know, here it's 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 an observation that I have done. I'm sure uh, other Indian women may agree with me. The day I'm wearing a sari. My driver just gets down and opens the door for me. There is a certain command that a sari, you know, it draws towards it. It's a very graceful attire. 
and somehow over the years she had reached a moment where she realized that she must face everything in life with her grace so that day her adjusting the kanchivaram sari and being very very confident about herself was an acceptance that i accept life with all its grace okay thank you thank you over to you shitil thank you priyanka thank you so much now let's move on to our next teller she is jayshri shetty from delhi um jay she just give let me give you a, a small introduction of her name jay she is derived from the sanskrit jay means victory or triumph and shri is an honorific prefix prefix often used to signify auspiciousness or prosperity therefore jay she can be victorious or one who brings prosperity and auspiciousness and i am very very happy that you are here today uh, i would like to tell you a very small secret like uh, jay she i had invited her i mean i have been following her since almost 15 years now on facebook and i had invited her during the lockdown the very first online when we went online but due to some reasons she couldn't join and i'm so happy that she is here today and uh, i'm proud of it that i could bring her in this festival this year over to you jay shri thank you thank you sheetal for such a warm and lovely introduction and i'm, and I'm extremely sorry that i couldn't be a part of That's this fine. beautiful Absolutely festival fine. earlier <laughs> on thank you chennai storytelling festival for having me today and giving me this opportunity and it's a great pleasure so i'm jayshri sethi and i reside in delhi and i run this organization which is called story ghar and the story that i have got for all of you today uh has stayed with me for more than 10 years i have nurtured the story for 12 years and every time i tell it i get a new insight i would rather say i have evolved with this story it's one of my favorites and this story takes us back uh in time when our economy ran on ana taka paisa a fantastic financial law currency structure where six pesas constituted one ana 25 pesa counted for uh uh four ana hindi and then 50 pesa amounted to uh eight anas and 100 pesas made 1 rupee and embedded within this currency structure there went a proverbial gem a very popular saying solaha ani sach 16 anas truth it's not just a number it signifies uh, the rock solid truth Uh, that uh, keep us grounded and that keeps us close to god or godliness so here my story begins this story is a jatak katha and it is about a water carrier in olden times there used to be men who would uh, carry a buffalo hide or a leather bag around their waist and that bag would uh, was called mush and they would carry water in that mush so they would sprinkle water uh, in front of the shops they would quench thirst and take water to rich households so once upon a time there was this uh, water carrier bhishti and his name was shravan kumar he was happy go lucky he had no worries in his life he could hardly get his ends meet but he was always joyous and always he would sing a song apne jab mila kho honge aaj kal ya parso hu hu hum bhi jag ke pyare honge aaj kal ya parso one fine day shivan kumar was returning home and all of a sudden he saw something round in shape lying on the road and shining in sun he bent a little went close <gasps> it was a one rupee coin and that was a big amount in those days he almost went crazy now think about this guy who had never seen uh, such big currency how would have he felt <sighs> 
He looked towards his left, he looked towards his right and kept that one rupee coin in his pocket and rushed to his house. The only worry he had is that uh, somebody would come and steal it. And he wondered and wondered and thought and thought, where should he hide his one rupee coin? He went inside the kitchen, opened some empty boxes, put this coin in those boxes. But then he thought, no, if a thief comes, he will find it. Then he uh, uh, pulled a, a, a trunk that was uh, kept under his bed and he tried to uh, hide it there. Then again, he was fearful. He kept that one rupee coin under his pillow and uh, again, he was not at peace. He kept tossing in his bed and kept thinking he should get a nice hiding place. Then around 4.30 in the morning, a light bulb went on in his head. And he remembered that he saw a loose brick in the south side wall of the city court. So he woke up and rushed towards the south side of the city. And there was this fort and wall and there was a loose brick. He pulled that loose brick out, kept that coin in, covered it. And he remembered the location. First brick on the third row from the ground first brick on the third row from the ground and that place became his safe vault and now he was ah, relaxed and happy and this this coin proved to be lucky for him uh, times changed he started making more money and he also got married few days went by after his marriage a great fair came to be held in the next village and his wife said to him, would you take me to the fair? When we got married, uh, my father gave me a one rupee coin. We should go to that fair and uh, uh, do shopping and have a good time. Hearing this, Shravan Kumar said, you keep your one rupee coin with you. I also have got a one rupee coin. Why do you waste it? Keep it safe. Next day, around three o'clock, when sun was scorching and everybody was indoors, Shivan Kumar was happily um, uh, jumping, hopping and skipping towards the south side of the city where behind the first brick on the third row from the ground, he had hidden his one rupee coin. And around the same time, the king was standing in his balcony and he was having a panoramic view of his city and suddenly his gaze then stopped at this lanky, weak looking man. King thought to himself, mm, what business does this young man have that is walking when everybody is indoors? He orders his sea boys to go and fetch him. After some time, the coat is set. And uh, there are two aisles where all the darbaris and courtiers are sitting, wearing colorful robes and nice turbans. And then there is an announcement that is called out. Babulahaza, Hoshiar, Rajam ke Raja. Handsome, me handsome, shokino ke shokin, Raja Rangila, Padhar Rahihain. And there comes the king and sits on his throne and he calls for the proceedings to be started. And two sepoys bring this lean Shavan Kumar in front of the king. And Shavan Kumar doesn't know why he has been caught and made to stand in front of the king. He is very nervous and anxious and the king asks him, What's your name? I'm Shravan Kumar. Where are you going? And what makes you so happy? Uh, uh, um, Raja Ji, uh, I just got married. Is that a matter of happiness? Never mind. When everybody is indoors, what business takes you uh, outdoors and where are you going? Uh, uh, Rajaji, <laughs> I am going to get my treasure. What treasure? We kings have treasure. You, a commoner, do you have a treasure? Yes, Rajaji, I have got a 
one rupee coin that I have hidden behind a new spring on the south side wall of the city court. <laughs> For such a petty amount. You are taking all that trouble to going that far. Hold on. He clapped twice and two beautiful maids came there. They had a golden plate in their hand and that golden plate was covered with red velvet cloth which was very soft. And the king lifted the veil, lifted the red cloth and that golden plate was filled with coins. And the king took one fistful and called Shravan Kumar close. Come here. And Shavan Kumar came forward and he gave those coins to Shavan Kumar. And Shavan Kumar started to count his fortune. <laughs> One. <laughs> Maharaj. Maharaj. I said, forget that one rupee coin. King again claps. Two beautiful maids come with uh, their face covered with a veil, with a golden plate in their hands, covered with a red velvet cloth. King lifts the cloth up and this time he takes two fists full of coins and calls Shraman Kumar close. Come here. And Shraman Kumar comes close and he gives him the coins. And Shraman Kumar Counts his fortune again. Now think of this guy who had gone almost half mad seeing one rupee coin. What would be his situation when he saw so many coins in one go at one place? So he again counts his coins. <laughs> 20. <laughs> 40. 40. Smart. It cost him 51 coins, Maharaj. You are great, my lord. <laughs> I said, leave that one rupee coin. I am giving the I am giving you a fortune, and you're still stuck with that one rupee coin. Wait. Again, King claps, two beautiful maids come, and again he gives him two fistful, and Shivam Kumar again counts. <laughs> 60, 70, 80. I'm a Maharaj. What is going? It makes 100 and fun. Again, that one rupee coin. Maharaj, in our Indian culture, we don't prefer round figures. Even if we give shagun or money on auspicious occasions, we uh, we give it in uh, uh, odd figures like 101, 501, uh, 1001. Now, it was a matter of prestige for the king. And everybody in the court knew that the king had a cuckoo in his head. He was really weird and whimsical. King kept offering him money and Shravan Kumar kept adding one rupee coin to whatever bid King offered. And this negotiation, this deal went up to 10,000 coins. And Shravan Kumar still didn't forget his one rupee coin that he had hidden behind the loose brick on the south side wall of the city fort. Now, King was actually very angry and everybody in the court, all his courtiers and ministers and darbaris, they were also very anxious that if Shavan Kumar doesn't give in, he doesn't budge, the king is going to do something really crazy. The king said, Okay, Shavan Kumar, this is my last bid. If you still don't forget that one rupee coin. I'll put you behind bars. Mama, sorry, Maharaj. Yes. Uh, 
I give you one portion, one part of my kingdom. Now tell me, will you forget that one rupee coin? And Shivan Kumar knew his boundaries. He was a good salesman. He knew how far he can push the envelope. And he said, yes, Maharaj, you are great. <laughs> Me and my wife it will always be loyal to you. You have changed my life. Yes, forget about that one rupee coin, Maharaj. You are great. Now, everybody in the court took a big sigh of relief. Finally, a decision was made and this tussle, this conflict had come to an end. But as I told you earlier, the king was little weird. He said, okay, Shravan Kumar, see, I have a big heart. Tell me, which part of the kingdom would you like to have? Now, Shavan Kumar said, Maharaj, the southern part, because in the uh, because behind the third row, behind the first brick on the third row, oh, 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 from the ground, I have uh, hidden my coin. Hearing this, everybody in the court burst into laughter, and also the king had a big smile on his face, and he said. Shavan Kumar, keep 10,000 coins. Keep that one rupee coin. Keep the southern part of the kingdom as your own kingdom. And I give you a chariot. Take your wife to the fair and have a good time. And tomorrow you will be crowned. Because I believe you will take care of your subjects as you took care of that one rupee coin. People who take care of small little things in their lives they get bigger things. And from that day on, Shivan Kumar was never poor. He was very happy. And with this, my story comes to an end. Thank you. So, <laughs> I've been telling this tale and uh, every time I tell the story, my heart is filled with gratitude for all the little joys all the little things that I have in my life. And I ask my audience uh, about the things that they have that may appear insignificant to others, but are very special to them and, uh, and have proved lucky for them. So I would be happy to hear your uh, experiences or if you have any thoughts to share with me. Yes, Jayshree, just give me one minute. Okay, so Apni Jeb Me Lakho Honge Aaj Kal Ya Barso. It's sung by Kavita Krishnamurti in the movie Muskurahat, which was released in 1992. Isn't it, Jayshree? Okay. Impressed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it Now it applies to everyone in today's life because Apni Jeb Me Lakho Utte Hai Aaj Kal Ya Barso. Isn't it? <laughs> Yes. So I would say um, the one line which I would like to give you uh, for this is best things in life are worth waiting. It was an amazing story of Shraman Kumar. Uh, I would just like to say, are you into acting by any chance? Yeah, I do theater a little bit. <laughs> okay, so Zubu was moderation, super enacted. The story was amazing. And Thank yes, so to much. the audience, please. I have a riddle. Okay. Okay, Pratigya. Yes, Pratigya, please. Uh, Jesse, it's such a fun story and um, it was wonderful to see you enjoying it while telling. And so while you were enjoying it as audience, we definitely enjoyed it a lot. Uh, thanks for sharing. A lovely story indeed. Thank you. Okay, I have a math riddle because this story included uh, currency and numbers. So, uh, uh, Sheetal, if you allow me uh, please, uh, please. Um, just 40 seconds, we'll uh, wrap this up. Okay, sure. Now, each one of you, uh, even uh, the participants who have kept their cameras off, they can also do this. Think of a number, any number. In your mind, for example, I think five, right? Any any digit, one to hundred. 
think of a number, one to 100. Once you are done, show me your, your, your thumbs going up. Perfect. Then double it. Think of a number and then double it. Now add 10 to it. Got it? Now half it, make it half. Now take away the number that you started with. Now I believe all of you are left with five. No, I was left with two. How? Okay. What, what was the number that you thought? Six. Uh, I mean, three. 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 So okay. I doubled it. Six. Six. Plus 10 is 16. Half. Yes, half. Um, eight. Take, take okay. away. Okay. Yes. Okay. Got it. <laughs> super, super. <laughs> amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> When I was young, my mama used to do this game with me. So it has stayed with me. And uh, whenever I tell this story to kids, so we do this fun math game. That's amazing. Super, super. Yes, thank you. anybody? Yeah, to I just... Yes, Poonam, thank you so please. much, Ashri, for this lovely story. Very simple, but with a very profound meaning. Uh, take care of the little joys, the little things that you have. Much will follow. Right. And uh, your way of telling was very captivating. I was hooked to the screen. And um, God bless you. Thank you so much. Lovely story. Lovely telling. Lovely expression. Thank you. Thank you. So Jayshi, you had asked the little things, you know, what uh, I would like to say the little things very important in my life is my pet, my cat. Um, yes, very little things, but one day when she was lost, it was like I will I had become lifeless. It was like somebody of my own has gone away. But I was very lucky that she came back and she with she is with us. <laughs> so yes. <laughs> nice, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Any insights from anybody else? Nina, yeah. would you like to tell? Yes, yeah. Nina, please. Yeah. Good morning and uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, the style you narrated, it was, I can't uh, point out anything. It was just vibrant with all those modulation and actions. You were living the story and we were enjoying it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, Nikbaliji. Yes, uh, please. It was wonderful watching a movie just like a movie. <laughs> like a movie and acting and telling the story at the same Thank time, you. full of action and suspense, what is going to happen. And the foolish queen, finally, Seven Kumar got benefited. I know. We get that Thank relief so in much. the end. You Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. And your riddle involves algebra. Absolutely. <laughs> your reading, your reading involves algebra, so maybe mother is a teacher or something. So whatever number you think, ultimately the answer comes to five. That's it. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Super. Yes, Shraddha, please. Hi, Jayashree. That was such a wonderful telling. And um, it was like, like somebody else also mentioned, it was glued to the screen. Um, maybe may the other tellers use this story on and share it on. I would, I would love to tell this story to children. Yeah, please do. It is a Jatak thank Katha. You. Jatak Katha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, the yeah. source. All right. Thank yeah, you so sure. much. I loved all the modulations and all your props. It was just, um, it was like watching, you know, a, 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 a huge entertainment show. Such fun. And I'm so <laughs> glad it ended on a happy note. I was really worried that, you know, he would be thrown into jail at the very end. <laughs> but I'm glad the court laughed and the Maharaj laughed. All's well yeah. and well. Totally. Thank you. So Jayashree, you. you are working at Doordarshan, right? Yeah. So I host uh, live shows there. And after COVID, uh, some studios are shut. So uh, though my engagement has reduced, but yes, I'm still with Doordarshan. I started in 2000. Yeah. I've been uh, doing shows since 2000. Yeah. It's okay, been like 24 so years now. Wow. Super. Super. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jayashree. And can we move on to our next teller? 
All ready? Okay. So our next seller is Shilpa from Jaipur. Uh, Shilpa, let me give a small introduction about your name. So Shilpa is derived from, again, the Sanskrit name Shilp. It means art, strong as a rock, and well proportioned. So Shilpa, please welcome and all to you. Give me a moment. Sure. Um, excuse me, if you don't mind in the meantime. Yes, yes, please. She starts, yes, please, uh, please, sir. If uh, Maharaj has a daughter, would have given and uh, get it married to Shravan Kumar, I think. No. <laughs> Shravan Kumar is already married. <laughs> ah, he, recent, he had recently got married and his wife had requested him to take him to the take her to the fair. So that would not have been fair to the wife. <laughs> you can modify the story like this. <laughs> no, but married. then we have to go to the first story where yes, you know yes. ah. love, different shades of love. <laughs> Thank you. That's good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, over to you, Shilpa. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you, Sheetal, for such a beautiful introduction. And uh, I'm Shilpa Mehta. I'm a storyteller based in Jaipur. And I'm really thankful to Dr. Eric for giving me this opportunity. And I'm really glad to be a part of this festival. I have got a severe, severe sore throat. So I hope I'm clearly audible. <clears throat> yeah. So <laughs> before I be, you know, just cough a little. <laughs> so this is a story I read long time ago, and uh, the story is uh, bundles of hope and bundles of trouble. And uh, straight away, I'm going to dive into the story so that I can tell it in one go without any interruptions. <laughs> so. Sir, sir, please give me one chance. Sir, please, I'll be prepared with my story. Oh, sorry. I'll be prepared with my presentation this time. No. No way. Sir, please, please, sir. Sir, we'll get the contract. I, I, I promise you, sir. Sir, please, sir, please. How many more chances, Lily? I'm fed up now. The company doesn't pay you for bringing your problems here. Okay? If you can't deal with your work, then I think we are better off you. And we are better off without you. Is that clear to you? S sorry. Sorry, sorry, sir. Sir, I, I promise. I, I promise one, one chance, sir. One chance. Lily was mumbling and pleading in her sleep. Sweating profusely, she woke up with a jolt. Oh, it was just a bad dream. Oh. She sighed in relief and glanced at the clock. Ah, oh, again today, I have overslept. Suddenly, she felt the wind swirl around her and her world went blank. She shook her head, groggy and pale with a bad sleep. She panicked and woke up. After some time, she rushed towards the kitchen. Well, she had to get ready also. So what did she do? She quickly put the milk to boil and started fixing up a quick breakfast. Her mind, oh, her mind rushing everywhere, her hands juggling multiple pots and pans all at once. When lo and behold, the milk boiled over, cascading down the side of the vessel. Oh no! She rushed to turn off the gas when her hand slid past the oil container, knocking it over and it all spilled onto the floor. And before, you know, before she could let out a groan, now an acrid smell 
signaled her that the pancake on the griddle was burning happily. She could never be on time. Every day, every day was becoming a challenge just to get through how to manage things in life. She was wondering, work, home, imbalance? Well, <coughs> this was Lily, a very sweet, kind-hearted, hard-working and beautiful person, even as a child. But as she grew up, life and life's responsibilities slowly started eating her away. Every worry, every trouble, each and every problem, it preyed on her mind and weighed her down. She was absolutely convinced that she had more troubles than anyone else in the whole wide world. Oh, Lily thought, if only I had no worries, no troubles, no problems, I would be so happy. I would be so beautiful, just like my name, just like I used to be, if only. And these, if only this, if only that, if only this, if only that, these thoughts would pull Lily down further and further and her heart felt more and more suffocated under this huge load. Jeene ke liye socha hi nahi dard sambhal nahi muskurae to muskurane ke karz uthar nahi Oh God, have you put troubles only in my life? Am I to face troubles? She sighed as she sat on her chair, holding her head in her hands. And without warning, tears, those tears, oh, they started flowing down her cheeks. And to top it on, that day, she had pl planned to wind up her chores early, finish her presentation for the client, and go to meet her friend, Sarah. Her dear friend, Sarah, well, Sarah was going through tough times too and had lots of troubles. She lost her husband. Her business venture was failing. Her savings were running out. And all in all, life was becoming difficult for her. It was getting difficult for her to survive also. Huh. Thinking about Sarah, her dear friend, and Sarah's troubles calm Lily down a little. And she stopped sobbing. She wiped her tears. Sarah too seemed to have quite a large share of troubles. But uh, give me a moment. She also has quite a large share of troubles herself, Lily thought. But I don't know how she seems to be able to move through her troubles and come out the other side with her head still held high. I don't know how she does it. The more, the more Lily thought about Sarah, the more she began to think. I think... I could ask her to tell me how she deals with her problems. And then I would know how to deal with mine. I think she would tell me that. Yes, I should do that. I should do that when I meet her today. So in the evening, after finishing her work, Lily went to Sarah's house and knocked on her door. Sarah opened the door. Oh, Lily, how are you? Oh, come, come, come. It has been so long since we met. Come on in. They sat down together, chatted for a while, and enjoyed 
a hot cup of tea. Finally, Lily couldn't help herself any longer. She leaned towards Sarah and asked, uh, Sarah, uh, uh, if you don't mind, I want to know something. Yeah, please, go ahead. What is it? Uh, you know, I, I deal with so many problems constantly and each new day seems to dump a fresh batch of troubles on my head. And I, I, I just cannot deal with everything that's happening to me. But I see that you seem to be dealing with everything so well. How do you do it? How do you do it, Sarah? Oh, Lily. Yeah. Well, we all have problems in our life, don't we? But I can't tell you how to deal with your problems. Only you know best what are the right choices for yourself. Oh, Lily's face was pressed fallen on hearing this. She seemed so defeated. She had come with so much of hope. Now, looking at Lily, Sarah felt very bad and she said, but I could share with you some advice that someone once gave me and which has really helped me. Oh, really? Please, please tell me. I would really like to know. All right. Pay close attention. All of you, you also uh, pay close attention. You need to let, you know, that part that is connected to all that exists and is. You need to let that part of yourself take over caring for your troubles. Eh? Oh, well, all right, said Lily, a bit confused. It certainly wasn't the kind of advice that Lily had expected, but she did not press the matter. After some time, she left and began walking home. Chalta ja rahi, chalta ja. On the way home, she thought, well, I have tried everything else I can think of. Let me give this also a try. What do I have to lose? So that night, when everyone else was asleep, she went to her room. She shut her door, got into bed, sat there and said, that part of me that is connected to all that exists and is, Please, please help me with my troubles. I don't know. I don't know what else to do. Please help me. Then she turned out her light, pulled up the covers and fell asleep. Sleeping and sleeping. And that night she dreamt a dream. In her dream, she found herself in a vast candlelit cave surrounded by grey bundles of all shapes and sizes as far as she could see. Jaha tak nazar gai sir grey bundles or bundles. Then she saw a woman with flowing long white hair and dressed in a long dark cape walking towards her. Who are you and what is this place? This is the cave of bundles of troubles and I am the keeper of the cave. Bundles of troubles? Yes, each person who walks the earth carries a bundle of trouble on their left shoulder. Lily turned to look 
And yes, there was a grey bundle on her left shoulder. It had been there all this time and she never noticed. If you wish, you can take down your bundle and exchange it for another. Lily was surprised. Could it be that easy? Could she exchange all her worldly cares and troubles packed in that gray bundle on her left shoulder for someone else's bundle, which had to be lighter to carry? Because no one in the world was as troubled as she was. Mere jaisa dukhi aur parishan to is dunya mein koi aur hoga hi nahi. She hesitated, yet asked again, Really? Can I? The keeper of the cave nodded wisely. Yes. So Lily, she lowered the bundle from her shoulder, her left shoulder. Oh, it feels so good to put it down. Like like she had stepped out from under the shadow of all her burdens. Then she began picking up different bundles. Feeling them for their weight. Trying them on for size. And she did, she did this for hours and hours until finally she picked up one. This one seems light. Uh, can I take this? This one feels just right. Certainly you may, smiled the keeper. But uh, why don't you open it up and look inside? Oh, oh yes. So Lily puts the bag down and pulls the great drawstrings and looks inside. But but these are the same troubles I have brought in here. Lily looked up from the bundle in shock and despair. The woman nodded and smiled. Yes, that's what usually happens. But do not lose heart. Look, there's another bundle on your right shoulder. That should help you to lighten your load. Lily, she turned and saw another bundle on her right shoulder. Yes, it was there. It had been there all this time and she never noticed. And this bundle, oh, this bundle on her right shoulder was woven of silver and gold threads and it sparkled like a diamond in the sunlight. Why won't you take down that bundle and look inside? Lily took the bundle down, opens it up, and to her utter surprise, the bundle was light. She pulled the silver and gold strings and looked inside. What was there? What was there in this bundle? Oh, there were, there were all of her experiences and all that she had learned. There were her talents, her gifts, her hopes and opportunities yet to come. Her heart was filled with joy. She was so happy. And she lifted her head to thank the keeper of the cave. But the keeper of the cave, that old woman, was gone. All the grey bundles were gone. The cave was gone. And Lily found herself sitting up in her bed with the morning sun streaming through the window gently caressing her shining face. She got up and 
smiled. Tufano ko chir ke manzilo ko chheen le aashayen khile dil ki ummide hase dil ki ab mushkil nahi kuch bhi nahi kuch bhi oh ho ho aashayen 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 khile dil ki thank you <laughs> thank you so much chirpa for the wonderful story and uh, i would like to finish one song which you just sang initially jeene ke liye socha hi nahi muskurane to muskurane ke tujhse utarne honge tujhse naraz nahi zindagi हैरान हूँ मैं ओ हैरान हूँ मैं दिस इज संग बाय लता मंगेशकर फ्रॉम द मूवी मासूम थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू फॉर कंप्लीटिंग द सॉन्ग फॉर मी आई वाज हैविंग सच अ सोर थ्रोट दैट आई डिड डेयर टू से इट and that's uh, fine सो दिस हैपेंस मेनी टाइम्स इन आवर लाइफ्स राइट द बैलेंस बिटवीन होम एंड वर्क and i could very well relate uh, myself with lily and also with sara yes we do carry bundles of you know uh, with us and we feel so light when we leave it uh, usually uh, i prefer to sit and meditate with god to help me get this magic yes over to the audience please i love the story shilpa uh, i mean uh using a simple uh, story there uh, you it was so profound the message was so profound and i like the metaphorical interpretation also using that uh, the dream story that you asked yeah yes the, yeah it was very nice thank you so much for the story i enjoyed it and i loved your expression and the way you looked into the pot and everything it was very nice <laughs> <laughs> wonderful yeah, I... uh, yes okay. edwin edwin please um i enjoyed your presence you uh you kind of light up the screen and you've got a nice presence and your gestures are really fantastic and the story was something i haven't heard so i enjoyed that story very much thank you it's so fun anybody else please Poonam? yeah wonderful yes, yeah Neha. wonderful uh, wonderful uh, story and uh, narration shilpa irrespective of uh, your voice and other issues you've done so well love the way you look left and right and the song uh, of course our time will never the hope will always be there thank you so much so shilpa where is this story taken from yes so this is a german folk tale and you will find different versions of it okay and uh, i read this story long time ago this uh, was uh, Uh, adapted by Alison Cox, so this story somehow stayed with me. I just in like the strong message which this story gives. So I adapted it in modern circumstances in today's time. Amazing. But you will find a few different versions. Okay, okay, super. Yes, Big Valley Sir. But as we always look at problems, we will not see the solutions. Solutions also will be there. So definitely, somebody or other, ourselves only, will get the solutions to solve the problems. Thank you for sharing wonderful story. Keep it up. Thank you so much. Super, super. Yes, Shraddha. Just very quickly, uh, Shilpa. Thank you for battling through your bundle of uh, sore throat troubles <laughs> and bringing this lovely story to us. Absolutely. Okay. Super. And I would like to thank Shraddha also for helping me out. Thank you so Super. much. Super. <laughs> And also for singing. Yes. Love to hear the singing. All the three songs were super. Thank you. No, I do have a good voice, but uh, <laughs> due to strain, I have, I have, I mean, I've been having continuously back-to-back -back, uh, storytelling sessions. so i saved my voice for the past two days i have not spoken anything i was numb you know so there was peace at my place that i am not saying a word i am not oh my god 
So this is what I was able to manage by saving my voice for the past two days. Okay. <laughs> no, but you did beautiful singing. <laughs> Even with your sore throat, I don't know how you will sing. I would like to hear you when you are in your good voice. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Anybody else? Yeah. So I should say that's a true storyteller. Come what may the show must go on. And exactly. Shilpa, you were perfect today with whatever voice you had. We loved it. Thank you. Lovely story. I was often on, you know, here and not here because of my granddaughter who's with me. So, but the story was beautiful. And thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Baby. Yes. So let's move <laughs> on to our next storyteller, Ed Lewis. He's from California. So, sir, I would like to give a small meaning of your name. Uh, Ed Lewis is an English name. Ed is a simple variation of Edward means prosperous guardian, fortune, wealth. Elvis is of German origin and means renowned warrior. It has many variations in Latin, French and Gallic languages that all point to the same sentiment of strength and courage. So sir, nice. over to you. Interesting. So where do you find that kind of information? <laughs> I just found out for each and every one of them. You know, I wanted to say one-liners for everyone. So I just got this idea and I have just Googled it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's, a, that's very, yeah, it's very interesting. Thank you, sir. Okay. So um, my story is a true story, like everyone else's. So I was surrounded by my baseball teammates when I hit the winning home run in the Los Angeles City Baseball Championship. I was the man. I was number one. And of course, afterwards, we all went to the local bar. And after a couple of drinks and conversation, it always seems to turn around with most of the men I hung out with to what kind of work we did. And Big Mike said, I'm a tough construction worker. I build the most amazing buildings. And as you can tell, I got some guns. Everyone's trying to one-up each other. So Ragin' Ralph says, look out that window. You see those skyscrapers down there in Los Angeles? I'm an iron worker. I go to the top of those buildings and I build them. Nobody's tougher than me. So how about you, Ed? What do you do? Well, um, I'm a preschool teacher. A what? A, a, a preschool teacher? I got the same reaction from my father when I told him after I got my business degree that I wanted to be a preschool teacher and not follow him into the business world. The first thing he said to me was, so uh, what's wrong with you? Are you gay or something? And I went, dad, I'm not gay. I just feel like I want to work with young children and I have a lot to offer them. And he said, um, well, how about your own family? You know, when you decide to get married and have children, you cannot make enough money as a preschool teacher. I mean, what are you going to do? And besides, that's women's work. Men don't do that kind of work. I also got the same reaction from the woman's father that I wanted to marry. I had went to a university in Mexico for a year and got a bilingual teaching credential. Her name was Vicky, and we spent the year down there. And then I had a car, and we traveled all the way through Mexico, Central America, came back, and then she flew from Mexico City to her home in Connecticut. And I drove my car up to New Orleans, 2,000 miles around the East Coast, up to Connecticut, to visit her family and be introduced to them. It was a little different class than I was used to. Her dad was a judge, her mom was a lawyer, and they had a five acre estate with a kind of a, a minor mansion. Our first meal was one of those 
big living rooms with a table that went from one end to the other. The dad sat at the top of the table, the mom at the bottom, Vicky and I on the side, and her brother was in the middle. Her dad looked over at me and said, well, son, it seems like my daughter is smitten with you. So if you do happen to get her as the golden prize, how do you plan to take care of her in the lifestyle that she is accustomed to? Well, sir, I, as you know, we went to college together. We're both fluent in Spanish now. And I want to be a preschool teacher in a migrant farm camp in California. With my Spanish and, and these poor kids, I think I have a lot to offer and help them get prepared when they go into the public school system. He looked at his wife and shook his head. He looked at Vicky and said, you brought me another one of those? Well, that relationship didn't blossom because Vicky decided to marry someone else and she married the vice president of the Hilton Hotels in the Bahamas and had a great life with him. Three boys, they bought five resorts. They had their private jet. It was a lifestyle she was accustomed to that I definitely would not be providing for her. I got to know her later on in life um, and she invited me to come out. A buddy of mine and I flew out to one of her resorts on the U.S. Virgin Island of St. Croix and spent a nice week there meeting her and her family. Uh, it was a good experience. But I, with all that, I'm just, I'm just wondering, am I a real man? Is something wrong with me? You know, I mean, I'm not fitting the stereotype. I mean, I, I thought I was. I, you know, I built things. I you know, I did what I was trained as a boy. You know, I built things. I, I worked on cars. I lifted weights. I went drinking with my buddies. I joined the military during the Vietnam War. I was a weapons specialist. When I got out, I backpacked for two years around the world. I lived in a cave in the Canary Islands for six months, surviving off the land. I mean, I was doing all these manly things but I wasn't getting the respect. And I, I had some doubts, like what's wrong? You know, something must be wrong with me. I'm not fitting what is supposed to be manly. Well, that all changed for me when I met my childhood hero from the Western movies in the United States. His name was John Wayne. And I don't know if any of you watch those old movies. It's my generation. I'm a baby boomer and I'm 77 years old. So it's way back then. But of course, I and most boys wanted to be a cowboy. Cowboys are rugged and rough. But I met John Wayne when I flew to the Amazon River. And I spent two months going on small boats, rafts, plane hops, all the way from the mouth of the Amazon in Peru down to Brazil. Halfway, I stopped in Colombia, and I was on a small boat, and the owner said, if you want to prove you're a real man, get off here, walk through town, go through the jungle, and you'll come to this clearing and you'll meet John Wayne. All right, I'm going to do it. So I got off, I walked through the forest, and I came to this clearing. And in the forest were parrots, colorful parrots, and macaws, and monkeys, I mean, snakes. I was deep in the jungle. It was a real adventure. And of course, I felt manly. And I came to that clearing, and it was my childhood reincarnated there was an old Western saloon with a hitching post, had a stallion tied up to it and swinging wooden doors. And on the porch in a rocking chair sat John Wayne, my idol. Now here was the man. This is the guy who was gonna really teach me how to be a man and make sure I was a man. I walked up to him 
and he gets up. He's about six four, and he's got on this pinched cavalry cap. He's got on a black shirt with pearl buttons, leather pants, fancy boots with stirrups on them, and a Winchester rifle. And he had a holster with Colt 45s, which are the revolvers that supposedly won the Wild West. Uh, not for the Indians, but definitely for the white folks. Well, he looked at me and he said, well, so what are you doing down here, son? And I said, you know, John, I live in California and I got on my horse and I rode that horse all the way from California down through Mexico, all the way through Central America. I crossed the Isthmus at Panama into South America and I rode all the way through Colombia down to where you are because I heard that you were going to make me rich and make me a real man. Because you own gold mines, and I know that. And you, I'm sure you're very wealthy from that. I can tell by what you've built here. And he said, you know what, son? I like your attitude. You're kind of a storyteller, aren't you? Come on in with me. And I'll give you a shot of my best whiskey. So we went in through those old Western doors. And it was my imagination. I was a cowboy again in my childhood. There was this long bar with silver dollars all the way along the bar. Oaken stools. And this huge glass mirror over the bar. And around the whole establishment were all kinds of animal heads. I knew I was in manly territory, and in the middle of the dance floor were five five tables. Four of them had old people, kind of like I look now. They were just sitting there, and in the middle was a poker game. And there were four guys with Winchester rifles laid across their lap, and none other than the world-famous Western rodeo star, Annie Oakley. She sat at the head of the table and she was winning that game and she had her 1897 marlin rifle and she was a bareback riding woman shooter in the circus she had won all kinds of awards this is amazing fantastic so we had a couple drinks then john stood up and he said to all these tourists come on outside and let the Wild West show begin. So we went outside, sat on hay bales, and it was fantastic. They were roping Brahma bulls. Annie Oakley was riding bareback, shooting off to the side, hitting targets, bullseye. It was an amazing performance. And when it was all over, he said goodbye to everyone, and then he invited me back in for another drink. And he said, now, son, you know that I'm not the real John Wayne, don't you? I said, yeah, you don't really look like him. And he said, well, he is my hero. I was born in Germany. And when Hitler came to power, my parents and I fled and we went to Brazil. And my dad discovered a gold mine. And we got very wealthy, recreated. John Wayne Village with the saloon, the hotel, some stables, uh, horseshoe making um, barn. I've lived my dream. And he said, I know you've been talking about this man stuff and how people uh, think that your profession isn't manly enough. I'll tell you what. The key to being a real man is to follow your passion. Don't listen to all these stereotypes about what people tell you you have to do. Do what makes you feel good and what you know you were meant to do. And from that experience, I really got a definition, a new definition of what it was to be a real man. And I went home after that summer. I hiked Machu Picchu and 
went all the way the entire length of the Amazon. And I came back to California and I became a preschool teacher in a migrant farm camp for 10 years. And then I became an early childhood professor for another 14 years. And in retirement now, I travel and tell stories and sing songs and do movement activities with kids. And that has filled my soul and has given me a brand new definition of what it is to be a real man. Thank you. That was a wonderful story, sir. Uh, I could, uh, you know, um, feel many times that uh, we are not uh, successful in our life. We don't get what fame we are looking at. And uh, sometimes we really need it. And uh, sometimes I also feel that I don't deliver my stories the way, you know, I have really planned to deliver. But uh, uh, the realization, you know, when somebody gives you that uh, you are worth of everything in your life. And I think that is uh, something which only our friends can give us. So I would like to ask you, sir, uh, uh, this experience of your life, I mean, uh, why, uh, how do you, uh, my, uh, why did you choose to tell this to us today? Um, well, more because I'm trying to get away from these stereotypes people have about you're a man, you have to do this. You're a woman, you have to do this. All these stereotypes that people have of people. And I've raised my own children and all the students that I work with um, to just follow your dreams. Don't let people's opinion of you or a stereotype that you're supposed to do this. You're supposed to wear this. You're supposed to look like this. Just look at your own soul. Follow your own heart and just be yourself and surround yourself with the people that can handle that. And if they can't, bye-bye. I don't have any use for you. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. And look for the kind of work where you can fulfill yourself, you know, as far as careers go, environments that you want to be in. Yes. So I could relate, you know, connect this with Chilpa's story as well. Baggages which we carry, you know, the bundles which we carry, we need to leave that. And you know, only don't concentrate on others, what others have to say, but just concentrate on what you want to do in life. Isn't it? Yes, over to you audience, please. Yes, Pratikya. Um, hello, Ed. What an adventurous life. What a passionate life. Uh, loved your sharing. Thank you so much. And um, every time you spoke about those revolving doors, I could really visualize them the whole um, very visual. Thank you for sharing this this part of your life with us. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes, Puna. Thoroughly enjoyed the story, uh, especially in this world which we call a man's world, and a man is facing this problem. I think uh, it made me feel uh, that, in a true sense, everybody goes through their own battles, big, small, whatsoever. We think men. Uh, their life is easy, but no, there are people, uh, in spite of being a man, they face so many problems and all your challenges, you just proved to everybody, a man who listens to his heart is the true man. Thank you so much for sharing a piece of your life and a very important one for that. Great, thank you. Yes. Nina, are you trying to unmute yourself? Yes, uh, yeah. please. Every one of us could relate with uh, what exactly we were going through. So a connect was there and so well executed because many times we hesitate to uh, speak our mind. Uh, especially when it comes to, you know, ladies may find different options to express, but men very rarely do. And you have done that. Thank you so much for connecting all of us to this uh, beautiful story of yours. Thank you. You know, my... Um granddaughter is eight just turned 18 two of them actually they're one's a junior in high school one's a senior and the one who's a senior she's a straight a student you know very driven and when i asked her i said so what do you want to do here once you finish school and um she said you know what i'm an artist i'm going to follow my art 
and I'm going to take a year out because where she goes to school, competitive high school, and they're all going to Stanford, Harvard, all these places. She said, I don't have any use for that. I don't even like school, really. Um, and and But I love my artwork. And I'm taking a year off. I'm going to save money. I'm just going to start traveling around. And then I'm going to come back and get in some kind of an art program somewhere and try and get some mentorships and, and do that. And it's just it's kind of like what I have just said. As a family, we support her in doing that because that's her passion. And we've helped her identify. You know, I give her all the opportunities to figure out who she is so she can really follow his, her heart and be happy in life. That's, that's it more than anything, because I tell most of the students I work with at uh, high school and college, don't get sucked into a career that's going to just be because you've got money. Make sure it's passion, that you feel it, it's 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 something important for you because if you have to go eight hours or more a day to something you dislike just to make money you're going to be a wreck in the long run very true so and we have like uh, in india you know usually parents uh, throw their wishes on children and this right. has been going i'm a psychologist and a career counselor so i have students who come with parents and the parents are supposed to talk first. So they tell us that, you know, tell my child, I don't want him to do uh, him or her to do uh, science and take a commerce field, you know, but as career yeah. counselors, we have been trained that uh, we are not supposed to change a child's mind according to the parents' wishes. So here yeah. still in India, you know, we throw our wishes on our children and I think now it's slowly coming over and people have started understanding this. And I hope, you know, maximum of people around the world can get this, that it is so important for the child to be happy in what they do rather than throwing our wishes on them. So are there general stereotypes for women in uh, India? Like, women, of what, course. What are some expectations? Yes. yes, yes. For women, it is always at the end of the day getting married. In India, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Unam, can you tell something on this, please? <laughs> yeah, we've come a long way though. Marriage now, it is important. I mean, we still yes. don't allow our girls not to get married. But uh, professions, yes, stereotypes have been there also. Like you said, teaching is a woman's job. A lady should do it. Men have other things to do. So that is changing slowly. Uh, women like us are now in the forefront trying to do all different things. We are creating ripples everywhere. And soon I think we will realize that it's the heart's calling, be it a man or a woman. It is what <laughs> they want to do. It is most important. Yes. And with that hope, I think storytellers have to give that hope. Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> I think just to add to that, yes, uh, there are stereotypes, but things are changing. It's a very small change, a very slow change, but a change in the right direction. And we know it will we'll get there soon. Yes. So, I mean, you can just, uh, yes, uh, there was you can just one see that the, with, yes, yes, please, I'm sir. Sorry. You can just see that with just our, our leadership and people in power, the few women that are running corporations, a few women that are in high political offices. I mean, it's just sad that, uh, that doesn't happen at a more regular base, but um, it is changing. That's good. Can I share something? Sure, please. See, as a teacher who handles uh, class 12 children, now I find a lot of my girl students opting for you know courses which the parents don't allow. And of course, they want to stay uh, single lot of them their voice is so uh, i mean strong i find a lot of change in the present generation yeah so as a uh, as a psychologist you know we come across more of problems than the positive sides of it so a recent example uh, there is one girl who is wanting to go to us to do her masters okay and the mother is telling that uh, why 
I mean, she is coming and giving me reasons that why she doesn't need to go to US just because at the end of the day, when she is going to turn 25 or 26, she has to get married, you know, yeah. then why? Why she wants to go to US? Rather, she can go to Singapore or somewhere nearby and she can finish her master's and come. You know, so I come across more of problems than, you know, yeah. the positive side of uh, this. But yes, uh, we are trying to change, you know, people's mindset. And I'm sure it was going to work. <laughs> See, in my days, there was no talk of no marriage. Right. Yes. But now I find a lot of children coming, whether it is a, a girl student or a boy. They say, I want to stay single because I want to achieve this. So they're yes. so focused. Yes. But again, the girls are not allowed to think independently so much. <laughs> Anyways, yes. Any other insights? Can we move on to our next storyteller? Yes. So who's there? Our last storyteller of today is Pratigya. Our own Pratigya and of course my co-host for Chennai Storytelling Festival 2024. Pratigya, let me give a small introduction of your name. So Pratigya is also taken from Sanskrit language. Pratigya means promise, acknowledgement, proposition. Pratigya in Sanskrit language is related to prakrit, words pana or padiya. Over to you, Pratigya. Thank you, Sheetal. Uh, let me just check. Am I spotlighted? Not yet again. I will do that. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, it's, it's interesting that you spoke about my name because, uh, maybe I'll come to that after my story. Sure. Listen to the story of Narangi. Listen to the story of Narangi. She lived in Marwad. Narangi's hands have been anointed yellow, which means Narangi is now married and she's gone to Kachabli. This story is based on a real life incident. About 70, 80 years ago, as was the norm, people usually named their children, especially girls, on food items. You would hear names like Badam Bhai, Almonds, Pista Bhai, Pistachios, uh, Dadam Bhai, Pomegranate, Narangi Bhai, Oranges. Narangi was a young little girl 12, 13, she was married and sent off to her husband's house to Kachabli. This village Kachabli is where our story takes place. Rajasthan, a state in northern India, can roughly be divided geographically into three. You have the rocky or the hilly region, you have the, um, uh, the, the, the tar desert and you have the fertile lands. Kachabli village was in this rocky area. Narangi's husband's house, now her house, was on a slightly higher platform. From there, one could see almost half of the village and look far into the fields where the farmers would go for work every day. One evening, Narangi was carrying this heavy stack of dry grass on her head and climbing up towards her house along with her aunt-in-law. When suddenly she heard something, she turned and what did she see? There were these two burly men on horsebacks riding past the village roads. They were wearing those white clothes and colorful turbans. The little girl was all excited and she asked her aunt, Bua, Bua, e koi barati hai ka? Are these some people going on a wedding procession? Her Bua shh her immediately. She looked carefully and she whispered in her ears, E barati koni? E daku hai? 
they are no part of any wedding procession. They are dakus. You see, dakus were bandits or decoys who would uh, attack the village completely unannounced. They would come and loot whatever they could find and they would just go away with that. And if anybody so much so has resisted it, one cut, one kill, they never hesitated to get into any kind of violence. The problem was, the bandits did not like being called dakus. And unfortunately, they heard those two women calling them exactly that. So you can imagine, they were not happy with this. So the very next afternoon, when all the men had gone off to the work in the fields, with only the women, the children and the older people left behind. Narangi heard this sound outside her house. She rushed out to have a look. And what did she see? These two tall, burly men, broad shoulders, wearing colorful turbans on their head. She felt very puny, very small in front of them. One of them had a large scar running right across his face and the other had pulled his dagger out. It was shining in the afternoon sun. Narangi started shaking and shivering. She, she, she realized she is all alone at home. What will she do now? The Daku said, give me all your jewelry. And she quickly removed every single one of them. Her earrings, her necklace, her rings, her bands, her waistband, her armband, her anklets, her toe rings, every single piece of jewelry. But for her boar. A boar is a headpiece which every Marwadi woman would wear to indicate that she is married. It was a symbol of her marriage and when you remove that boar, it means that she is a widow. One of the Dakus thundered, O boar kyo rakhi hai? Oi mana de! But Narangi knew the importance, the significance of the boar. And so, although shivering and shaking from within, she curled her fingers into a and held it really tight right next to her body. She didn't even move her little finger. Furious, the Daku stretched his hand out to pull it himself when the other one stopped him. And he said, Bhai sa, o thik koni hai? And so, the Daku let it be. He then went inside the house. And he got quite a good loot, lots of jewelry, lots of silver vessels, lots and lots of good precious things to take along. He grabbed all of them and brought it out to the open yard. Now, most of the Marwadi houses in those days would have a little warehouse, a little basement kind of a space right outside the house. This is where they would store all the sacks of grains. The Dakus, the huge burly one, squeezed himself into that small little door of the warehouse to go and collect that wheat for himself. But what did he see? The whole warehouse was empty. Not a single sack of grain. Mm. Very disappointed and angry, he did not know what to do. He looked more carefully around and he found just piles of papers and books. He just picked them up and brought them outside. He made a huge pile of them outside in the front yard. You see, Narangi's husband was not just a farmer. He was also the money lender of the village. So those books had details of how much of money was lent to whom, uh, at what interest rate, how much money was paid back. Basically, they were books of accounts. Narangi couldn't understand what will they do with these papers. And when she noticed that one of them had got inside the house and brought out a can of kerosene and doused that pile with kerosene, an inflammable liquid. Narangi pleaded to them. She said, I have given you all my jewelry. You've taken everything from my house. What will you do with these papers? Please, please let it be. But he just jeered and laughed at her and looked away. Narangi rushed to the other one and she wept and she cried, please, please, this is the only source of income we have. Don't do anything to it. You will not get anything by destroying it. 
But when she realized that neither of them is bothered about what she has trying to say, she went and sat on that pile of paper. And she said, you want to burn these papers with me? You burn me with it. I told you, these decoys, these dakus would never hesitate even once to burn her right there. The situation had grown very, very tense. A pile of paper doused with kerosene, a little girl sitting on it. For the dakus, it was a matter of fake male pride. For the girl, it was a matter of life and death. One little matchstick, one single matchstick was all that was needed to burn that girl alive right at that time. When suddenly, these loud drum beats were heard. This particular beat was a symbol, an indication, an information to all the men folk out there in the field that something terrible has fallen upon the village. You need to rush back right away. Some woman in the village had noticed the dakus. She knew this beat and she had used that beat to inform them. Of course, the villagers heard it. They dropped whatever work they were doing. They picked up whatever tools that they could find and they started rushing towards the village. The dakus heard it and they could see the men rushing towards the village. A huge mob of them holding on to whatever tools they had. They looked at each other. Just the two of us. And they decided to flee for their lives. After all these years, even today, when you go to Kachabli village and you ask the older folk, do you remember Narangi? They would smile and they would say, oh yes, you know what? When Narangi was a little girl, she faced the Dakus all alone and she shooed them off the village. Narangi Bai is no more today. Her husband passed away about a year and a half ago. She survived by about 10 children and loads and loads of grandchildren. And I'm very, very proud to say that I am Narangi Bai's granddaughter. Narangi chori hai tu jabri. Narangi chori hai tu jabri. Daku su akeli bhidgi re. Thank you. Super, super, super Pratigya. I can see the enthusiasm you take in this story. I have heard the story at the French Institute, I think, in, in the initial uh, CSF days. It is the same, same, same. I mean, it's so super and wonderful. Yes, so why did you choose today to tell this story? It is um, one of my favorite stories. I've told this a number of times. Why this story is, we often hear stories about, you know, faraway people, legends and this and that. but. I believe that we need to share more stories about people that we know. Somehow it gives you a sense of attachment, a sense of rooting, a sense of knowing that, you know what, everyday people like you and me can be brave too, can do amazing things. You don't have to go to a war, you know, to prove that you are a warrior. You could be a warrior in small little ways on your own. And one more thing to add. I have shared this story a number, number of times at different platforms because as, as I told you, it's one of my favorite stories. And on one such uh, event, somebody in the audience came back to me and, and they were saying, you know what? My grandmother, my great grandmother rather, was such a wonderful woman and this and that, but I know only half of her story. He told me just one little bit that he remembered. And somehow that was very, very captivating. So later on, when I got an opportunity, I reached out to him. I got him to reach out to his entire family. I collected bits and pieces of her story and I shared his great grandmother's story a few years ago, again at the Chennai Storytelling Festival at the Hindi Fest. 
and yes. I, I it is I such a satisfaction i tell you uh, not just for me but for my friend and his entire family his uncles and his aunts were like oh somebody's going to talk about talking about my mother's story someone wants to talk about my grandmother's story oh yes they were so willing to share and it is a very very satisfying feeling and and that's why the story i think at that time you had taken few of gujarati dialogues in that story ah, yes well. you remember as well yeah yes yes <laughs> I remember it. <laughs> yes. Yes, over to you audience please. Yeah, so I have heard that story which Prithvi is talking about. It is the one that she told in the CSF I think 2 years ago. Yes. And yes. you're part of it remember? Uh, yes, you were also yes. there. Yes, so, I was there. Yes. So yeah, definitely when we tell stories of people around us or maybe our family, anybody, the connect is stronger because Indeed. it is one amongst us what we hear about legends and all is uh, coming to us from generations but we are not sure whether real they are real so getting to know real people is and their bravery and whatever story about them i think the connect becomes really flesh and blood so that is the kind of feeling i always get because i also believe that uh, we don't uh, value our own stories or the stories of people around us the day we start valuing them the world will become much better and we'll have confidence and faith in ourselves and with that i think pratigya thank you so much for sharing another yet another uh, story from rajasthan your land and the people of that land so every time i listen to your stories that image of that state comes to my mind and that ra 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 added uh, yes the real oh, effect i, I of... must say um, i just picked up that ra 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 from a very famous uh, song by ila arun ila arun but of course yes. the lyrics yeah. were mine yes <laughs> i understood yeah. so lovely thank you yes yeah I, i find it very important to honor our relatives and acknowledge mm-hmm. them they're good the the good the bad the ugly um but to really acknowledge them and and things that they did were that were important um is something we pass on to our own children and the other generations and people who hear us that's us as storytellers because as you were telling your story i just related to um a story i've been developing about i just found my biological family because i was adopted at birth I found them about 2 years ago. And uh and I went to visit all of them this summer and I learned my whole history back to 1850. So I, I, those kind of things are just really you know stories like you tell touch that little vein in people and they can start thinking about that. And I just as you as a storyteller I mean you brought that woman to life. I mean you really did. I mean uh, and you describe some things I think a headdress and a few things that I don't know anything about but you did it so concisely and precisely that I I could visualize it something I don't know about and you're very expressive and I I like how you pronounce things you're very punctual I mean you're just it's very clear and good emotion expression all that stuff so I I tell you that's an experience story though like <laughs> Yes I would add to that uh, really pratigya's pronunciation is what uh, I envy of <laughs> should i say that <laughs> <laughs> and no i'm just fan of her <laughs> that's all <laughs> thanks you too very thank yes, you so people. coming to your name back what did you want to say uh, after yes, the story uh, yes so i was named by my grandfather okay. or not really by his uh, husband and oh, coming wow. to the word play of the name again Um when I was a kid I couldn't say the word narangi for some reason it was like a tongue twister for me and oh, so okay. I used to call my grandmother nagdi nagdi <laughs> actually means notorious so people would give me a stare when I say that how can you call your aunt that or your grandma that but yeah uh, she was nagdi bai for me for a long time oh, okay <laughs> super yes anybody else nageshwar yeah. sir yes meena please I would love to say, uh, yeah, tell Pratikya that uh, uh, your pronunciation, your singing, and the story that was very close to you was right from your heart. And we could all, uh, you know, so happy to see that you want to talk, talk about someone. So you're inspiring us also to work on to talk about our legends, 
which we have around us. So thank you so much. It was truly inspiring and uh, captivating actually. I'm glad I could touch that chord. That is what I want. Each of us look around and look around. There's so many stories around us of people that yes. we know. Yeah. Thank Do you. any of you know Ramya Srinidhi, I think is her last name? Yes. She's in, you know her? Yes, yes. Well, talk to her about, she does storytelling for me at different events in California. Oh, wow. Well, talk to her about that. And, uh, I'm part of her uh, Kamishi by and, storytelling. She does Kamishi and see, by and see about that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Um, given an opportunity, I would love to tell stories along with you. Let's see what works out. I'll have a word with Ramya. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Pradikna. Yes, Jainty, ma'am. Jainty. See, I was transported to that world to tell you. I uh, I could visualize. Uh, uh, Narangi lady and then you know that they're quiet and other things. It was excellent. Thank you. Yes. Any insights from anybody else? So one last word I would say, Pratikya, nowadays these filmmakers are also making real life stories, you know, rather than imaginary stories because people are able to connect more and they want to see the reality of uh, the world rather than, you know, the imagination and uh, the dreams what we create into. So I think uh, we should go for reality stories more, you know, I think. <laughs> yes, Eric. Wonderful storytelling, Pratigya, and, and wonderful hosting, Sheetal. Thank you Thank both you. very much. And one uh, I I wanted to just share uh, before Eric moves to another teller. So I've been listening to all the stories. Uh, Pratigya, your story made me uh, go through the land of Rajasthan. And I also enjoyed the experience of you revealing that she was your grandmother, you know, towards the end. I think that was a good aha experience. And I agree with you that we need to stories of our land and you know our origin and the people who we relate to because their stories have to be passing on so thank you for sharing your story thank you Gitanjali. thank you so much i i think one advantage of telling uh, personal experience stories is that um you know one naturally tells these stories in a in a relaxed conversational tone of voice and I think then once a storyteller discovers that uh, that they can tell a story that way, that can also uh, go into their the way they tell folk tales or grandmother stories. There. Yeah. Um, well, just, thank just... you, Eric, for putting this on. It's eleven o'clock here in California. I'm going to check out. Thank you so sure. much. Thank and you, sir. Ed, Thank you so Ed much. facilitates the, the California Storytelling uh, Association. Do I have that right. right? We put on events and we pay our storytellers. Well, we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying to catch Ask up. Ask Ramya. Ramya's done it quite a few times. <laughs> and, and you probably charge audience members, too. No, we don't. We, no. Uh, for, well, people that are part of our organization, you can go online and check it out. It's called the Storytelling Association of California. Uh-huh. And a so membership we, for two years, a year is thirty dollars, and oh, we have you access. Money from, you get money yeah, from. Yeah, that's the, how we have our money. Uh, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. then, then we have events that are free. Like I put one event on called Genre Storytelling, where every month we do a different genre. So we start actually in August with personal stories, then we go to folk tales and spooky stories and tall tales. This month it's stories of love. Then we go into myths and all historical, and so each and we have seven tellers. And we have a guest teller from somewhere else, and then we have six of our local California people. So are those sessions open to the general public or only to members? Anybody? Yeah, you just go to um to that website, Storytelling Association of California, and under genre stories. You just click on that and you click on the month and then it takes you to Eventbrite and you register. If you're not a member, it costs you five bucks. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. If, if you are, then 
It's free. Great. And we also have a, a story library of over 110 workshops that you can access and all that. We do all kinds of things. Great. Well, thank you for um, joining us. What is, is it Saturday night for you? Yeah. It's yes. 11 o'clock right now or 11, yeah. whatever, 11, 10. Yeah, it's it's Sunday. Uh, now it, it was Sunday morning. Now it's Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Great. 13 okay. and a half hours difference. So for us, we put on events. Our, it would be 7 o'clock in California. So for you guys, it would be 8.30 if you were to in the morning to participate with us. You know, it's a Wednesday night uh, here in California. We do that one. But we do lots of other ones, too. So we're on opposite sides of the globe. Yeah. Can, can I ask you my silly question? Sure. Uh, which one of us is standing up straight and which one of us is upside down? <laughs> I really want to well, know. In, us in California, we're all over the place. So uh -huh. we're either up, down, sideways. Just depends on the day. Very good. Okay, Sheetal, uh, uh, carry, carry on. You're still the host. Yes. So thank you, everyone, for the wonderful session. And thank you, everyone, who were active here, participating and hearing to us. Uh, have a beautiful Sunday further. And we take off from here. Great. We'll start up again in about two and a half hours. Sure. Nice. And thank you, you for being a great MC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so thank much. Thank you, Peter, and thank you, everybody, thank for the you. lovely stories. Thank, thank you, Eric.